everyone. It's time for another edition of Intro to R. So today we're talking about our first step in flow control learning computer science, which is conditional statements. So let's see. And I have a notebook here that has all of the examples sort of printed out um, and uh, runnable code. So go ahead and download that if you have a chance so you can follow along. So what is flow control in computing? Computers do one thing really, really well, and that's the same task over and over again, exactly the same way. Um, so people are really tend to be really bad at doing this. Um, there's always some error because you forget to do something, you copy and paste something, you forget to change something, you know. Humans tend to be really bad at doing the same thing over and over again, unless they have a whole lot of practice. Computers are great at it though. It's like really the only thing they do really well. In fact, one of the things they don't do well is making judgments and decisions. Uh, computers will not make judgments and decisions for you. Uh, for you. Uh, you have to tell them what you want them to do. So flow control helps get around this inability to make decisions by giving basic instructions for possible scenarios ahead of time. So you don't have to be like, well, what happens if I do this? You know, well, what happens if this is true? What happens if this is false? You can just sort of uh, anticipate those, uh, give it instructions so that it can continue uh, running the program instead of uh, halting and um, you having to intervene. Uh, there are two main components to follow control, conditional statements and looping. So we're going to talk about conditional statements today uh, and looping we're going to talk about next time. But these are all, uh, for all computing languages, are basically the same. Um, they differ mostly in syntax. There's some different stuff uh, here and there about them. We're going to talk about R specifically today, but this is broad conceptually uh, something that's important in computer science. Okay, so let's talk about conditional statements. Conditional statements break down decisions for the computer in binary decisions, so either true or false. So you have to phrase something in a way that can either be true or it can be false for the computer. Um, the basic structure goes, if this condition is met, I want you to do this, okay? So if the traffic light is green, you should go. Um, if the condition is not met, then the computer doesn't follow that instruction. So if the light is not green, we should not go, okay? That's basic, basic conditional statements. I think everybody is, is pretty, uh, is probably okay with, with that idea. Um, so let's talk about how you would write this in the syntax of R to get it through. So how do you write conditional statements in R? Well, here is an example of a conditional statement. If true print, this should always print. Um, I'm giving you, so uh, I've color-coded parts of the statement. Um, the if function uh, just alerts the computer that I'm giving you a condition, I want you to test it. Uh, the thing inside the parentheses is this is the condition I, that I want you to test. And then the purple is, this is what you should do if the result of that test is true. Okay, so that's it. It's really quite simple. Um, if it's false, then don't run the purple code at all. Just skip it and keep moving. All right. So uh, if you have a situation like this, um, you can run both of these and you'll notice that if the for the first one, it prints, this should always print because the condition is always true because we've just defined it as true, right? Um, for the second one, uh, this shouldn't ever print, uh, doesn't print because again, we've defined this condition as false. And so it should never print, okay? Okay, so this prints, this does not. That's always gonna be true because there's no condition that doesn't make this true and no condition that doesn't make false false, all right? Okay, good. Um, let's write a conditional statement to describe our first example. So green light means go. So we have this green traffic light, so we have to figure out how to uh, get the idea of green light means go into the syntax so that R can understand it. What's the condition that means go? So to write a test, we have to figure out what the condition is. And the condition is the light is green, okay? So that's the thing that needs to happen, the test that needs to be true. Um, so how can we write that down? I know what you're thinking, this is kind of hard. So we use, if something has to, is, is an equality, so it's true or not, we're gonna use the double equal sign. 
we're going to make a, a, a thing called light and we're going to test whether or not that's green. So light equal equal green. OK. What should happen if the condition is true? OK, so what should happen if the condition is true? If the condition is true, we want you to go. So we're going to print go. Print go. OK, so we know how to do that. Just print go. And so to we'll put it all together in one statement by saying if light equals equals green, print go. Great, that's fantastic. So we can go over here and test this out. You can say light, assign that to green. If green light equals green, then print go. And it does, prints go. Um, you can try it. You can also change the light to red and see what happens. So if the light is red, then what happens? Nothing, right? Because what we're telling it is if this is not true, then you're just going to skip go, OK? You're just going to skip go and keep moving. And it did. It skipped go, and there was no output at all. All right, so good. We're going to come up with the condition and test and then the instructions about what to do if that is true. So what I want you to do now is go down here and write a conditional that prints higher if the number n is above 10 and lower if the number n is below 10. Um, so what, remember what you want to do is you're going to have to define an n and assign it some number. It doesn't matter what number it is. And then write your little, um, uh, write your little conditional to fit this, fit this statement. OK, so I'll pause. Go ahead and pause. Try it out. Remember, you're going to have it's a it's not it's an inequality, not a quality, right? Yeah. OK, hopefully you're back. Had some success. Check your understanding. That's good. Um, so let's talk about conditional if else statements. OK, so maybe you have a, you want to, it, it, what happens if you need the computer to do something else besides if it's true, like you do this or you do that. If it's true, you do this. If it's false, then you do this. Um, uh, but you don't want the true thing to also do the false thing. So you have to you literally send it in this direction or that direction. Um, well, if, if all statements is what you want. So for our example, if the traffic light is green, you should go. And if the light is not green, maybe you should stop. OK, you should not just like do nothing just stop uh because that's always a good idea i mean like maybe in so people in southern california have like widely missed the red thing because i see a lot of people going on red but you should stop so that's good uh so using an if else statement is kind of where you want to go and so here's the the if else statement here if the light is green print go okay and then you can see that these these uh curly braces sort of uh, uh are, are telling it all the things that you want to do if the condition is true as soon as it ends you print else and then open another set of curly braces and then print you know you do your print stop which is the thing if it's not green we want it we want people to stop um you'll notice this uh syntax has to be just right um if you're doing it, if you hit another enter or something like that, it, it doesn't work. You can have white space in between the two curly braces, but else has to be sort of in between the two curly braces for it to work properly. If you don't, then it's probably not going to work. And yeah, you'll just have to try again. Um, so uh, note also the use of white space to help with this readability. Again, you can put all of this in one really long line. Um, I don't recommend it because it's really hard to read, right? So I've hit enter, it indents for me, um, and then I hit enter, or when I close the curly brace, uh, it will uh, de-indent, and then else will indent again. So this indent just sort of helps you map out kind of what's within here and what's within the statement as well. So again, true, we're going to do this, print go. If false, we're going to do this, print stop. Okay, great. Conditionals else if statements. So going further, um, remember that statements are binary and only work for things that return true or false. Uh, if you don't have if you have more than two things that you want to happen, you have to make a binary choice for the computer. Sorry, that's just how computers <laughs> work, right? They only work on yes or no's. But you can um, use if else statements to help give you additional opportunities to make something true uh, to run some code, OK? So it's not that we're pulling it out of the binary, but we're just saying, well, 
you can have maybe green or yellow or red, you know, instead of just is it green, yes or no. Okay, so for this example, we have if green means go, else if, uh, and then we can give another conditional. Okay, so if the light is yellow, maybe we should print slow down. So maybe not, you know, speed up, uh, but, and maybe not stop, but slow down. And then if neither of those are true, uh, then it's going to print stop. Okay, so true, do this. If the second thing, the second conditional is true, then do this. But if neither are true, then do this. Okay, you can string as many if else if statements together as if you want. Um, you know, uh, it, it, I would say don't go crazy, but like I, you know, do what you do what you need to do in terms of um, in terms of of getting those conditions met. Uh, to make this more helpful, there's something called the switch function, which is pretty neat and specific to R. Uh, it helps make these if else statements more compact. So in our past example, if we pull that out here, so we have sort of three conditions. Um, we have green, yellow, and, and, and neither green nor yellow, okay? Uh, we can put this in the switch functions by doing this. Switch uh, and the first argument is uh, what you want to test, so the object you want to test, which is light. Um, and here are the different tests. The subsequent art, uh, subsequent arguments are all different tests of that light. If it's equal to green, then you print go. If it's equal to yellow, then you print slow down. And then the very last one is kind of the else. If none of those are true, then do this, okay? So switch kind of, it's ex doing exactly the same thing as up here, except it's sort of compressing it and making it a little bit re more readable, which, which is kind of nice. You can't use switch in every case because of some limitations in terms of what, um, what you can sort of put in here. Um, uh, on the other side of this equal sign, but it is really nice if you have these sort of simple if else statements and you want to compress it down into something a little bit more easy to read. Okay. Okay, so I want you to do another check your understanding. Um, and I want you to write a conditional. So actually, we're taking the past check your understanding and we're going to build on that. Okay, so add two other conditions that print a lot lower if n is below zero and a lot higher if n is above 20. Okay, and try using if and else. Um, and then also try to write the same thing using switch. Okay, so I'm going to give you an opportunity to pause and uh, do try to do this. Come back. Okay, hopefully you've come back. Hopefully you had some success doing this. It's a good idea. So let's talk about the last kind of thing that we need to talk about here, and that's uh, nesting conditional statements. Now, we really have to make it to a binary, but if you, you can also nest conditional statements inside other conditional statements, although really don't go nuts here because it gets really hard to read and really hard to understand if you have too many nested in, in in each other, okay? So there may be some refiguring that you need to happen. So I wouldn't go more than like kind of two levels in. If you wanna do two levels in, you probably have to just, uh, well, what we tell refactor stuff, but we can talk about that later. Anyway, I've added here a car in front. So the car in front value, now like if you're at a light and the car in front of you is still stopped, you can't go, right? You have to, you have to get them to go. And so maybe you need to honk your horn. So, What's happening here is if the light equals green, um, uh, if that's true, then it gets kicked to this statement right here. If the car in front equals stopped, then the thing that it does is print honk. Um, if the car in front is something other than stopped, it goes to the else statement and then prints go, okay? Uh, if and so that's how that's evaluated as green. Now, if it's not green, it skips all of this stuff and goes straight down to here. Test if it's yellow, print slow down, and if it's not yellow or green, then it prints stop. So it's going through the same thing. It just has an extra thing to uh, to do if if the if the um, car in front uh, or if the light is green, it also tests if the car in front is stopped. Okay. So these nested statements are indented with an additional level you'll notice, and that's why they kind of call them nested. Uh, they also call them stacked statements. Sometimes you hear it referred to as that, uh, but be sure to use white space to help conditionals remain readable because you can imagine that if this just got really, really long and went way over out in here, 
uh, it would be pretty hard to figure out what, what the computer was actually, you were telling the computer what to do. Um, too many nested statements, again, can get really hard to read uh, and really confusing, and you could forget oh, what on earth is going on <laughs> with, with your computer pretty quickly. So I would do one, maybe two, another one, another additional level beyond this, but I wouldn't get, get too far in uh, beyond that, okay? Okay, so here's the thing about if and else. They kind of only work if you only have one position in the object that you're testing. So the light has to kind of have just one value. Um, if you have a vector with a lot of values, right, it's not so great um, for doing this, because, especially if you need all of those positions tested. Okay, so uh, let's say we have light all the way down here. If we have light that is green, yellow, green, red, okay, so there's a vector with four uh, spots. If we go ahead and run our last, our, our first example, okay, where light equals green, um, it's going to give us this warning, okay? It's going to give us this warning, warning in if light equals green, uh, the condition has length greater than one, so this condition is, is greater than one, this test, and we can go ahead and run that and see how many conditions there are. See there, one, two, three, four. Um, and for that, uh, only the first element will be used. So it's returning go because the first element here is green, okay? So that's the only one it's testing. It's kind of just ignoring everything else, which is, you know, not as handy. Um, however, if you use if else, if else together, all in one name, all in one function, uh, you can actually uh, uh, test, this is a vectorized if else function, okay? So this is gonna be, you're gonna put for the first argument, your condition that you wanna test, uh, what to do for the if it's true and what to do if it's false. So if you go down here and you run, you'll, you can see that it's now evaluating every single element of light instead of just the first element. And it's not giving us this warning. It's go, stop, go, stop. Okay. So because it's green, yellow, green, red. Great. All right. That's perfect. Right. Um, now, if you need that additional level, if you need an additional test, you can just nest these things together. So we have our first if else, okay? So if light equals green, then go. If it's false, then I can test again. If light equals yellow, nested inside of it, slow down. And if that's not true, then stop, okay? So now we have go, slow down, go, stop, because the original vector is green, yellow, green, red. All right, sound good. Okay, now, just to sum up really quickly, it's gonna be a quick lecture, but um, we're gonna, you know, do a bunch of work in class as well. Computers don't make decisions for you. Uh, you have to instruct them on what you want to do if they encounter specific situations. Um, conditional statements can help you control the flow of a program or a script by just giving instru computers instructions to follow so it doesn't, you know, stop and have to ask you what to do. Um, you're primitive, pretty limited by shoehorning. You need to shoehorn everything into a binary, right? A binary choice of yes or no, um, or a multiple choice situation, which essentially comes down to a binary. But you can really get creative in how you set these things up uh, and do a lot of different things with them. And they can be quite powerful and they really can um, get very sophisticated. Uh, you know, again, this is mo how most of computers work, most computing languages. So all of the different things that computers can do um, that you're used to almost the computer thinking for yourself or guessing what, it, what you're trying to get it to do or guessing what you want is actually somebody behind the scenes um, programming a, a ton of conditionals okay, back there to just see if you click here, if you click there, if it's fast, if it's slow. Um, you know, they're, they've just programmed a ton of conditionals into that uh, to make the, the flow of your computer and your computing uh, user experience really, really smooth. Okay, and it just takes practice, right? It just takes practice to do this and practice to get thinking in the way of how do I force this, this sort of thing into a binary, all right? Okay, so here's your action items. There's assignment 3.3 and read Davies chapter 10.2 for next time. But that's it for me today, super short, and uh, keep on coding.